guys, it's your girl, Ashley Kirkwood with the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast, where we teach you how to start at the top of the speaking market instead of working your way up from the bottom. During this show, you will hear solo episodes from me, where I'll show you how I have landed and negotiated five and six figure speaking contracts and licensing deals. You'll also hear from our amazing guests who have grown enormous speaking businesses by utilizing sales and marketing principles that work. If you want to grow your speaking business, listen to this podcast. And then afterwards, head on over to ashleynicolekirkwood.shop and grab my book, Speak Your Way to Cash, How to Start at the Top of the Speaking Market Instead of Working Your Way Up from the Bottom. Ready to dive in? Let's go. What's up to the Speak Your Ready Cash family? It's Ashley Kirkwood back again with another podcast episode. But this time, guys, I am actually going to let you listen in to a live video that I recorded. Now, if you're listening to this live video on the podcast and you're like, oh, I want to join your next live. I want to ask you questions. I want to be able to get feedback about my business. Then you have to follow me on Instagram at The Ashley Nicole Show and make sure you're following the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook page. All right? Make sure you're following the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook page because that's where I go live. I also sometimes go live in the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group. But enough about that. Even though you may have missed it live, you're about to hear it again. So listen into this live episode and let me know what you think. You can always send me an email to Ashley at speakyourreadycash.com. Let's listen in. All right. So good morning. My name is Ashley Kirkwood with the Speak Your Way to Cash podcast. I run two companies, Mobile General Counsel and Speak Your Way to Cash. Today, what we're going to talk about is entrepreneurship. So if you own a business, this is going to be really good for you. And and and, and specifically, what we're going to talk about is the biggest losses that I've faced this year and what you can learn from them. And we're going to talk about business losses now, okay? So every business owner really should be listening to this if they have the time. You want to invite your friends to this. Because I don't have these types of discussions often, but we probably should have them a little bit more. We probably should have them a little bit more. We probably should have them a little bit more. So yeah, let's talk about these losses. Before we get started, (laughs) tag in your entrepreneurship friends, people that should be hearing this, people that want to be or should be a part of this discussion And we're going to go through a few losses. Now, the reason I'm having this discussion is because as a coach, as a consultant to organizations, I find that people like to make their coaches or their consultants insurance for mistakes. They like to make their coaches and their consultants insurance for mistakes. And the fact of the matter is, I've never met anyone that's won really big without losing pretty big also. And although you hire coaches and consultants to shorten your learning curve, there's a lesson curve that you can't skip. There's a lesson curve that you can't skip. And that lesson curve will involve you taking some losses. Now, I'm going to specifically share, I think, like four or five of the biggest losses that I've faced this year. But you got to understand, guys, that even if even if you have amazing coaches and amazing consultants, these people are not a replacement for you thinking and doing what is best for you. They can offer insight, they can offer guidance, but they are not there to do the work for you or to do the thinking for you. So I'm grateful that although I've had great coaches and great consultants along the way, I've also experienced some great losses that I'm so thankful for because now I know what I'm capable of. (laughs) I know what resilience looks like because I've walked through some things. Okay, so let's talk about it. The first loss that I'm going to talk about and share with you all is in hiring. I did not simplify my business enough sufficiently. I didn't simplify the business sufficiently to move really, really, really quickly um, through the onboarding process. So I didn't, my business right now, we use way too much technology currently. This is a current issue. We use way too much technology. We send emails from two different platforms. We have two or three different text platforms that we use We use a variety of technology to power our law firm. It's not simple. Like you're going to have to be here a while to really understand the technology. And the downside of that is when you're hiring, when you're in a growth season and you need to onboard people quickly, if they got to learn 10 tools, you can't get an ROI out of that individual until they learn 10 tools. And that's not good, right? So I need to work on simplifying the business model. We've done that a little bit by not offering so many services. We've streamlined how we serve clients, 
but we have not streamlined enough how we provide the solution. And so for you as a CEO, as someone who is always trying to grow and do better, the lesson from this is if right now you have a very simple business where you can go and see all of your sales on one platform, that's a good thing. Don't overcomplicate your business. Don't chase different tech trends. Try to keep it as simple as possible. Because in my experience, our most challenging um, hiring issue is that we have so, the learning curve is so complex. Like it's not just send an email from here. It's not just all the clients are in here. People are in different places. Different systems are used for different things. And the client doesn't feel this this complexity, but the, the, the internal people that we hire definitely do. So that's, that's a big, big, big issue for me. Um, it's something that we're always working through. And to be clear, <laughs> we have hired several people to simplify it. You know, we've had tech audits. We've hired chief tech officers who said they could come in and do all these things. At the end of the day, what I've learned from paying a ton of money to a ton of people is that if you don't, if you yourself are not independently proficient in what you're hiring someone else to do, and it's like tech specific, you're likely to get screwed over. It is what it is. So I know how to use every piece of tech in the company. I don't use every single piece of tech. I have people who do it, but I learn how first. I pay really, um, <laughs> I, I, invest a lot when I get a new tech tool to pay a consultant that maybe is going to charge me four, five, six, seven hundred dollars an hour to show me how to do it so that when someone comes on and they're like, oh yeah, I sent that out, I did it, it's right, I can like check um, because I've lost money by not not understanding what's going on in my business and I can't have that happen again at this level of management. And for any of you who focus um, or who watch The Profit with Marcus Lemonis, he actually would go into companies that are far larger than mine and say that it was a waste to have all these middle managers because then you don't know, one, you have a middle manager and we tried this. We tried having like an operations manager. And what would happen is some all the, the employees or contractors would talk to them. They wouldn't know, they would talk to me. I was just talking to one additional person to get the information to my people. It didn't work for me. Not yet, not where we're at yet. Now, when we hit 3 million plus 5 million, maybe then it'll be like, sure, you know, have all these extra people, but yeah. That's made hiring hard, not simplifying the business model. That's a big one. If anyone's done with that, just drop yes in the comments or send me a message saying yes. But you want to have a business that is simple enough that you can get help when you need it. I think a lot of people desire the, the additional clients and all of that. But if you're not careful, if you don't have good people on your team, that means you're doing additional work. So that's not always great. And the reason that's not always great is because as much as my clients would like to think they want me sitting at a computer all day, putting in periods on their documents, that's not what they hire me for. I'm hired as a strategist. I'm not hired to, to like, I'm hired as a strategist. I have to have someone else to implement that strategy so that I protect my mental space. Like I have to be able to think big. I can't, like, I'm not supposed to, I'm not the one like, oh, there's a period there. You know what I mean? Like, that's not, that's not what I like to do. Okay. <laughs> that's not what I like to do. And so whenever you get bogged down in the day to day, you can't think because you're working all day. You know what I mean? So you just have to be careful about that. Like how much time do you have to think? And right now I'm in a period where I'm thinking a lot and working a lot because I have speak your way to cash live coming up. Um, so that's a different type of period, but I have had to, you know, just put in some additional boundaries. So hiring is a big one. Totally my fault. I did not simplify the business sufficiently to onboard the best talent. All right. Second thing, client revenue lost. Biggie. Okay, let's talk about this. So I posted on Instagram earlier that we've lost about $70,000 plus in um, not, we didn't lose contracts. What happened was we've had people who sign contracts saying they will pay a certain amount of money. And what they do instead is either not pay sign on to a payment plan, not fulfill the terms, default their payment. Or we've had companies that sign the contract saying like, we're going to pay for your services. And they like default on the contract, end up going with someone else in breach of our contract. And because of that, um, that is where that money comes from. That said, you know, I, I added this number up um, this morning because I knew I wanted to post about the losses that we've had but I haven't felt this number all year. And this is just a function of us having a good amount of revenue coming in. Like, 
we we do we do good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We can lose this, and it's not going to be like, oh my god, let me fire somebody. It's not it's not a big deal from that vantage point. However, it does present an opportunity. The only reason why we were able to lose this amount of money is because we. Um, the way that we do our corporate contracts, a lot of corporations have tons of pushback to paying deposits. So if you're a speaker, consultant, thought leader, this is going to be interesting to know. Let's talk about, let's talk about corporate money lost and let's talk about consumer money lost. On the corporate money loss side, um, a lot of companies don't like paying deposits. Some will, some won't. The smaller the organization, the more likely it is that you're going to pay deposits. Now, none of my speaking clients pay me in full upfront. Okay. Now, I shouldn't say none. I should say uh, none of my large speaking contracts pay in full up front. So when I talk to you guys and I'm like, man, just landed a $75,000 contract, just landed a $60,000 contract, they don't pay all that money up front. They typically will pay it um, based on whatever payment schedule that we arrange. That payment schedule is negotiated. So let's say they haven't made their first payment. The contract was signed. They haven't made their first payment. I haven't delivered the services yet we lose that money if they decide to default on the contract. So we we lose the anticipated revenue. You, you with me? So that's where some of that money comes from. Um, on the consumer side, y'all know how it goes on this side. On the consumer side, people will agree like, yes, I want to do this program. I want to do this thing. They get on a payment plan that we finance, that we administer, I should say, right? And then they default. They miss a payment. Their card goes black. Uh, their card changes. They don't update it. They're like, oh, I don't want to do it anymore. I'm, you know, I don't know. I don't want to do it anymore. You know, we don't have a lot of that. To be specific, we've had two defaults on the consumer side. And we've had three defaults on the corporate or collegiate side. And I don't even know, I think I should probably say too, because one of those clients actually came back and signed a larger contract, which is a blessing. It worked out great. And we, it, it's not a lot, right? We're talking about a handful of clients, bad actors. Overall, we do really good with this. We're way below um, industry standards on defaults. It, but because of our pricing, the way our business is set up, it's still, five clients still represents $70,000 for our business. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, and we have price points all over the map, but this was particularly like a one-off speaking engagement, um, two one-off speaking engagements, and then two coaching clients. That's what, that's essentially what that represents. The one college, I ain't even gonna count it because they came back, paid, signed, sealed, delivered. But that's basically what that represents. Um, so here's what we're doing to change that. Here's what we're doing to change that. Here's what happens when you offer payment plans. When you offer payment plans and I fund the payment plan. So you come to me, you're like, hey, I wanna split up my payments. We then go in the back end. We set up a way for you to do that. You know, our administrator has, is the one who's like, hey, you know, make your payment on time, blah, blah, blah. We're going to set it up automatically. When your card defaults, we reach out to you personally. Um, and, and we charge like a convenience fee for all of that. An administrative fee is charged for all of that, which is typically why payment plans are more. Because the administrative side of a payment plan is far greater than a client who pays in full. I don't have opinions about like, oh, people who do payment plans, like those clients aren't good clients. I don't have any feelings about that. That has not been the case for me. We've had a, most people who sign on to do a payment plan do a great job. However, there are a few <laughs> that disrespect the, the uh, they disrespect it. Like payment plans are a, uh, they're a, they're not a, a right. Businesses don't have to offer payment solutions. They do it because they want to accommodate more people. Now, our solution to this on the consumer side, moving forward, we don't plan to offer as many payment plans, if any payment plans, that we personally administer. What we will do is offer financing options. So if you want to do PayPal credit, fine, but we get paid in full. You work that out on the back end with PayPal credit. If you want to go through another financing solution, we have some offers for that. You'll pay over time. It'll be a low payment for you, but we get paid in full. That's how we're going to do it. And then we'll pay for the convenience of that. The reason we're going to that model is because if we don't do that and we continue to um, serve more people, it, it's a cost of doing business. You're either going to pay for someone else to administer this stuff or you're going to pay because people will default. It's very, sometimes we, like last year, I think we only had, um, it was like maybe one or two defaults all year, which is great. Most people have a lot more than that. But as you start serving more people that you don't know as well, 
that rate can go up. So definitely we lost revenue um, on this side of it. Thankfully though, thankfully though, there is not a single client who is the, uh, who funds our businesses. We're sufficiently diversified where it's not like a client calls and I'm like, if this person doesn't do this, everything falls apart. We haven't, we're not structured like that. So that's a blessing, but you know, it's money lost. It's money lost. It's money lost. Um, Boundaries. Next big lesson. Next big loss. This year, because we did a lot more on social media, we ran a lot more ads, we spent a lot more money on advertising. A lot of people um, came into my space. A lot of you may be new followers from an ad. If any of you are live on Instagram and you're here from an ad, just drop ad in the comments. Like you've seen um, our ads on some of our posts and you've been like, oh, let me follow her. Just drop ad in the comments. But a lot of people um, that are that are new, whenever you scale up your advertising, they don't they don't know you, how you work, your processes, all that type of stuff. So people are gonna people are gonna reach out via DM, via email, via text message, um, all hours of the night. You know, if they don't automatically get a response, they're gonna DM you. They're gonna you know do all these different things. I even had someone, I had someone not email me. It was like over the weekend. They couldn't get in touch with me, so they emailed um, one of the people that they know that I know. Like we need her to respond right away. And it wasn't urgent and that's inappropriate, but it is what it is. People don't respect boundaries. So because of this, um, I'm I'm actually working to have clear social media phone hours. And then outside of those hours, like I'm not going to be online. Like someone else will be in the DMs answering them. I'll give my assistant access. I did that this morning so that we don't have to deal with this. Most of the time, like now, if, if, I D, if I'm DMing you, it, it's, it's like me. It's not my um, proxy. You know what I mean? But to manage things, I think that that'll be a way that we move forward just so that we have a little bit more boundaries. The other thing, guys, is like people people can email you at any time of the day, but they're not required. You're not required to respond. So I even tell my team this. If I message you, if I message you and, and it's it, it's a time that you're off, don't respond. Like I know your hours. You know your hours. Just don't respond. Um, so keep that keep that in mind as well. But boundaries was a big thing. Boundaries was a big thing. It is here. The Speak Your Way to Cash book is now available for you to purchase. Go to Amazon to get your audio, Kindle, or hardcover copy of the book. And we have a paperback copy, okay? So you can get it on Audible and listen to it. And I read it myself. So if you love the podcast, you will love the audio book. Go get it now. Speak your way to cash, how to start at the top of the speaking market instead of working your way up from the bottom. A bit about the book. It's broken down into six parts and it is over 260 pages of goodness, okay? Part one covers mindset. Part two covers getting yourself in the press. Part three covers assembling your six-figure offer. Part four covers inviting people to work with you. Ahem, sales. Part five covers delivering an outstanding speech. And part six covers legalities that every speaker needs and how to build a team. I mean, literally, what did we leave out? Nothing. So go to Amazon and grab your copy today. And let me know you did it too. Let me see if there's any other um, lessons that are on here. Um, I talked about hiring. We talked about client revenue. We talked about boundaries. Team. Okay, let's do team. Let's talk about the lesson I learned with hiring a team. Now, my firm has an incredible team. Shout out to my associate, my husband, um, the law clerk that we just brought on. We have a really good team on the law firm side. But as you all know, if you've been following me at any given time, what event am I working on right now? Just drop it in the chat. What what event am I am I working on right now? There's no way you're following me and don't know about the event that I'm working on right now. <laughs> like just drop the event that I'm working on right now in the chat. <laughs> so <laughs> in the beginning of the year, we hired an event planner for my event. Yes, speak your way to cash. There we go. Everyone knows what I like. It's very simple to tell. We hired an event planner for this event. And um, it was, <laughs> it was not a good fit. I'm very anal, guys. Like when it comes to how I want things done, I'm anal in terms of like it being correct. Like if you're going to come to me, make solutions, you have to, it needs to be like, hey, Ashley, this is the venue. This is the total cost you're going to be paying. That did not happen. We had to find our own venue. We had to, you know, we couldn't get responses to things in a timely fashion. It just was not a good fit at all. 
So we were like, all right, we've already, you know, sunk some money into this. Let's just cut our losses. <laughs> Keep the money, girl. Like, we got to go. So here we, here we go. We're, we're in the beginning of an event. We don't have an event planner. This is one of the most complicated Speak Your Way to Cash live events that I'm hosting because it's hybrid. We have an in-person model. Then we have a, um, a virtual model. So we're going on at the same time. And it's expensive. Like uh, this event to produce is over $50,000. It's just, it's a, it's, it is an investment to do this event. We're flying in volunteers. We're hiring day of event coordinators now. We're decorating lightly because the venue is already pretty well, pretty well staged. We're shipping things to people. Like these are the workbooks. We're printing workbooks. We're hiring designers to design everything out. I have like boxes that I'm shipping nationwide and also internationally and the content of the event is brand new like this is all new material that i've developed curriculum like i designed the curriculum myself so it's a very complex process without an event planner to handle the logistics someone that i actually trusted we're kind of in that driving seat so my husband and i plan 99 percent of the event and it's been a huge and tiring job Okay, <laughs> to be clear, like super excited about it, but also very tired by it. So it when when the event planner didn't work out, because I was like, man, this is going to be great. I can hire an event planner. I can chill. I can do this. She'll find me venues. I'll, I'll get lists of things and I'll just approve, approve. I had this an idea in my mind of like when people, you know, when people hire teams for the first time on social media and it's like them and their team. And it's like, look at all these people that do all this stuff for me. I had that idea in my head. I was like, oh, it's going to be amazing. Child, no. Okay. It was not that at all. Okay. It was not that at all. And now this is our sixth event. So for any of you who have done stuff yourself and you got to pass it off, it's tough. I can admit that like, I'm not a go with the flow type person. And I think that for a lot of people, the way they do business is very go with the flow. Like they're very much like, Ashley, it'll all come together. And I'm like, but where's the plan for it to come together? Because I hired you for the plan. So that was a huge loss, not having an event planner um, that we trusted to get that done for us because I mean, we had to jump in. That said, it's a great learning experience. Um, we did hire someone as a day of coordinator and I'm hoping that, I'm sure she'll be great. She has great experience. So I'm sure she'll be great. Um and my mom is going to help out. So my mom is the bomb and has been planning in her background and project management. So really excited about that as well. But that was that was a big thing. And this event overall has just been a lot of work, um, more work than you all can see. And I know that you all do see me posting about it every single day and running ads and doing all the things. But even up over and above that, it's been a lot of work. And the truth is that it is going to be the best Speak Your Way to Cash Live yet. And if you don't have your ticket, I mean... You're missing out. So I'm not doing a three-day event again. Okay. All right. Now let's see what else. I think that may be that may be the last big one. Oh, no, this is a big one. Trust in the wrong folks. Okay, let's talk about this. I have this year for sure trusted some wrong, the people, some people that I should not have trusted. And I have even promoted and uplifted, not uplifted, but like promoted people and things prematurely. Here's what I mean by this specifically. When I first start working with someone, I'm like so excited. And I'm a very, I'm a big, I'm big on referrals. Like I refer people all the time. I have, I'm big on referrals. I refer people all the time. So I, you know, when I first start working with someone and they show signs that it's going to be a great experience, I'm quick to be like, oh, they are great. <laughs> Go hire them. They know how to do this. They know how to do that. They know how to do this, blah, 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 all these things. That was a mistake. And I learned that this year because one of my friends had to pull me aside and say, like, you know, Ashley, the thing is, you can work with someone, they could not be great, um, and then you could stop working with them. But if you work with them, you promote them to your audience, say they're great, and then uh, other people are going to work with them because when you stop working with them, you don't make another post that's like, they trash. I don't work with them no more, which is true. I don't. I don't do that because I don't believe in like cancel culture and all that kind of stuff. I do believe that um, some people, if someone privately asks me, would you recommend this person? I would say um, maybe I'd recommend someone else instead. You know what I mean? Like I, I wouldn't, I'm not going to be like, oh, let me tell you all the dirt I got on them and they're bad. Like that. I just think that's a bad thing to do. 
So yes, yeah, she was right about that. So what I've learned this year is like, you can't, you got to give people time to be who they are. You got to give them time to show you who they really are. Some people are very good at faking the funk. Most people aren't good at doing it longer than 90 days or six months. So just give things time, give things room to breathe. The other thing, I hired a bookkeeper and an accountant this year. And um, I paid all, probably for the past 12 to 15 months to get my books done, my accounting done and all that stuff. Child, that stuff ain't a bit more done. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And like spent so much money into this stuff. And so I understand when people say, you know, I want to invest. I just want to make sure I'm investing with the right person. I understand that. What I will tell you guys is I'm about to hire another bookkeeper. I can't, what I don't do and what you shouldn't do, anyone listening to this, you don't hire someone, have a bad experience, never hire again, think everyone's bad. That's not a productive way to operate. And what was placed on my heart about this is, okay, Ashley, if you're struggling, like right now, you're still praying for more. This is me talking to me, right? Right now, you're still praying for more, Ashley. So if you're praying for more, great. But you have to handle what's in front of you. If what's in front of you is totally consuming you with overwhelm and and now you're not taking action and now you don't trust nobody, so you crying in your room, then you are not ready for more. There's still lessons you have to learn here. And I kind of treat my life like a Mario video game in some sense, You literally cannot skip a level. You have to go through the level you're on in order to go to the next level. And along the way, along that level that you're at, you're going to get coins, you're going to get gems, you're going to get knowledge. But if you really want to grow, the best thing you can do is learn. Okay? Okay, that's my Auntie Ash moment of the day. (laughs) If you really want to grow, the best thing you can do is learn because otherwise, you're going to keep repeating the same grade over and over and over and over and over again. And I'm very conscious of that. So I don't want to do that. Therefore, I make sure I'm um, I'm growing. So yeah, I trusted the wrong people, should not have done that. Hired some of the wrong people, should not have done that. At the end of the day, it's still my fault. Yeah, their work was horrible. But the reason, most of my bad decisions in my life have come from me operating out of haste from me not taking a night to sleep on it, from me not following the clues and the signs that are in front of me about people and instead being like, oh, I gotta get this done. You know what I mean? Not not getting, getting wise counsel. And there's a thin line between getting wise counsel, asking people their opinion and making all of your decisions based on people's opinions. I actually recommend if you are not, if you lack confidence in all areas of your life, the first person you need to ask for advice is yourself. Start to try to learn to trust yourself. Ask yourself a question, see what you think about it. A good practice that I developed was like, okay, I want to do this. I want to ask for their opinion on this, but what do I think about it? What do I feel about it? As a service provider, as a speaker, a thought leader, an entrepreneur, a consultant, you are, unless you do manual labor, (laughs) you are paid for your thoughts. You are paid for the way you approach problems. That brilliance that other people pay you for, you should also extend to yourself. Okay? Trust yourself is what I'm saying. So I trusted the wrong folks, but I'm going to read you guys this line from the post that I said today. Trust the wrong folks, but I forgave myself for it and I moved on. The good news is, as long as my intentions are pure, I'll be blessed. Um... Here's what I'll tell you. People are always, like there will always be people that want to do you wrong. Forgive them people and let it go. They don't care. That's why they did it in the first place. Or they may not know because you didn't tell them, you know? So I I give people grace and we're still in a pandemic too. So there's that. Now, here's the lesson. Here's the lesson because I get comments, um, right? I think it's so important to have a position or stance of some sort before getting outside opinions. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. Here's the, here's the thing that I wanted to say, the lesson in all of this. Um, I, I heard recently, like, you know, y'all social media influencers, you all don't tell us all the bad things happening in your life. You always, when you post pictures of your marriage, everything looks perfect. You post pictures of your business, it always looks like you're making money. Well, we, we are a revenue producing business. We are always making money. But at the end of the day, 
Um, the reason why I don't post a lot about my loss is because I post, I post what I'm thinking about. To be real, I don't think about loss as much. I think about the lessons that I've learned from them, but I move on. When I find that people are um, unsuccessful in business over an extended period of time, like two, three years, and they are in the right industry for them, and they are competent in what they're doing, what I find is a big issue is that they do not trust themselves at all. Like at all. They got to ask for permission to do any and everything. And if you don't trust yourself, you'll never disagree with someone that you see as more quote unquote powerful than you. The danger in that is you will often lose the ability to decipher and leverage your own brilliance. I could give you an opinion and say it's a bad idea. And you could be like, all right, I respect that opinion. Tell me why you think it's a bad idea. And then I can explain why I think it's a bad idea. But then at the end of the day, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I don't care what Ashley has to say. We're doing this. I'm going to try it for six months. I'm going to give it my all. Everybody else be, y'all know what. You know what I'm saying? That's where your confidence grows. It doesn't grow from me giving you the answer, you doing exactly what I say, and then you coming back to me for more answers. That's not where your confidence grows. And I know there are some coaches that like when people do that because they have a God complex. They want people to like worship them and believe they're God. I personally avoided coaching for a really long time because I don't want to be anyone's God. I don't want to be anyone else's bottleneck. I don't even want to be my own bottleneck. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be in that position in anyone's life where they decide what to do solely based on my words without ever consulting their maker or themselves. It's just not my thing. I don't need to be worshipped. I'm cool with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just not how I roll. Um, plus, I want to work myself out of a job. If I'm your coach, I really want you to be able, like by the end, to have enough confidence to be like, I know how she'd think about it, but let me figure out how I think about it. And to be clear, it's okay to disagree with me. That's on you. That ain't on me. So when, when people ask, you know, why don't people share all the bad things that happen to them? Consider this. Consider this. Winners focus on winning and lessons, not losses. So people aren't being fake. They just focus on what serves their future. If in your life, you are always focused on your losses, how you grew up, how your mama ain't do you right, how your daddy ain't do you right. It's likely your past, the memory of your past is not serving or fueling anything good in your future. To have a bad past it is what it is. Don't make excuses for anyone that hurt you, but figure out a way to think about it so that it can encourage you and make you better. Hopefully that makes sense. So those are my lessons. Now, look, I believe a good coach does a couple things. Um, one of them is gives you insight. The other is gives you wisdom. The other is they're transparent. <laughs> if that is what you are looking for and you want to land corporate clients, I would invite you to come to Speak Your Ready Cash Live in November. It's the 4th through the 6th. If you can only attend one day or any day, you're still going to get your money's worth. But the reality is if you can come all three days and we got some pre-event stuff going on that's really going to be transformative, it's going to change the game. We only have like 15 days left for you to buy your ticket to this event. 15 days left. Go on my Instagram page, check out the videos I posted recently um, showing the venue. It's a you can get You can get a virtual ticket or you can get an in-person ticket. If you want to attend and you want to split up the payments, we do have a financing option. Please DM me or shoot me an email so that you can get um, access to that. We don't make it publicly available to reduce the about, amount of people who like, you know, misusing. And you got to be careful out here in the internet streets, okay? Um, but please do get that. So today's date, I don't even know what today's date is actually, guys. September 16th. <laughs> today's date is the 16th. As of today's date, there are only 15 days left for you to get your ticket to Speak Your Way to Cash Live. So make sure you're there. A lot of you on here are already there. You're in the room. You're getting your ticket. Hopefully this was helpful and you learned something from this. If so, please share. Let someone know that. Also, my book, Speak Your Way to Cash Live, that you can see in the background more than likely is available for pre-order. Is available for pre-order right now. So you can go to my shop, ashleynicolekirkwood.shop and grab a pre-order of the book, which ships out November 15th nationwide, all right? All right, guys, well, you all have an awesome, powerful day. All right, wasn't that interview amazing? If you're anything like me, you have pages full of notes. But here's the thing. Before you head out, I want you to go to facebook.com and join the Speak Your Way to Cash Facebook group. That is where I am. That's where a ton of other speakers are, a ton of other people who listen to the show. All We all congregate there and chat. 
and it's 100% free. Now, if you're ready to take your speaking career to the next level, I have two ways for you to do that. One, you can go to ashleynicolekirkwood.com slash SYWTC live replay and pick up the live replay. That training is seven modules, chock full of information. It's crazy. Go over there, read all about it. Or if you want a more personal experience, you're already... You already know that you want to be a speaker. You're ready to fully commit and you want someone to walk you through it and save you tons of time Googling and doing it on your own. Then book a VIP day with me. You can go to AshleyNicoleKirkwood.com. Scroll down until you see the VIP day section and get more information on that there. All right. Thank you guys again for watching. Please do not forget to leave us a review. That is how we keep this train rolling and get some of the best speakers in the world to get on this show. So please, please, please leave a review. Shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram and Facebook in the Speaker Way to Cash group, Instagram at at the Ashley Nicole show. And I'd be more than happy to chat with you and say hi. All right. Y'all have an awesome, awesome day.